I've been using the Rodecaster Pro and the Pod Mic for about a year and a half now, pretty much since they were released, and every time I make a video about either of these things, one of the most common questions I get is why aren't you using something like a cloud lifter or a fet head with that setup? So today we're gonna see how much of a difference a cloud lifter makes when using the Pod Mic with the Rodecaster Pro. And if you're not familiar with the cloud lifter, basically what it does is boost the signal from your microphone. So if you're using something like a pod mic or an SM7B or a dynamic microphone, basically what's called a passive microphone that sometimes needs extra volume in order to be loud enough, this helps you with that because if you just plug your microphone into a mixer and crank the volume all the way up, a lot of times what happens is you'll get hiss and noise and sort of this ugly background stuff. Now, like I said, I've been using the pod mic, which is a dynamic microphone with the Rodecaster Pro for about a year and a half. And I don't really have any of those issues. However, I will say that when I'm using that setup, I do have my volume knob turned up pretty darn high, basically usually one notch away from the very top. And it's loud enough, it sounds great, I get awesome results, but there's, there is nowhere to go from there. And one thing I noticed is actually in Rode's own instructional videos for the Rodecaster and the pod mic, if you look in the background at the Rodecaster that they're using, its volume is also maxed out entirely. So that led me to believe that there probably is a little bit of room for improvement. Now there are a bunch of different products that do this same basic thing, boosting your signal, but the two most popular ones are cloud lifters and fet heads. Fethead usually goes for about $100, Cloudlifter usually goes for $150 for the single channel version. This is the two channel version because my wife Heather and I record together a lot and we do our weekly live stream podcasts and it just made more sense for both of us to be able to use the Cloudlifter. That's why I got this one. It's also a little bit cheaper than buying two of the individual ones. The individual ones are $150 a piece and the CL2, the one with two ports is $250, which is really expensive and kind of made me hesitant. We're gonna talk about that later when I kind of get in the pros and cons of the cloud lifter. The FET head on the other hand is a little bit different. It looks like a big metal adapter that connects to the back of your microphone and then the cable goes into that, but it does the same basic thing in terms of boosting the signal. The cloud lifter does not connect physically to the microphone, you run your microphone into it, and then you do need a second XLR cable to go into your mixer or your interface. So neither of those setups is better or worse, it just kind of depends on what works for you. Do you want something connected to your microphone? Will that work with your setup? Or do you want something that's gonna go sort of off by the mixer and then you do need a second cable to connect it. Now, no matter which you choose, they do run off of phantom power, which means there's no AC adapters, there's actually no controls on the unit at all. And the reason I chose the cloud lifter to be totally honest was I didn't want something connected to the back of the pod mic, but also I just really like the way that it looks. It's got this super cool retro kind of vibe. I've got my guitars where I really like retro style and just sort of, it reminded me of a guitar pedal, like an old one, and I just thought it was really cool. That's kind of why I went with the cloud lifter. Totally, I guess a valid reason, but kind of a ridiculous reason too. And I will say it is built like an absolute tank. It is super solid. And one thing I was really happy to realize is that since the cloud lifter runs off of phantom power, there are no power adapters or anything you need to connect. So it does add extra bulk to a sleek setup like the Rodecaster, because now there's another device plus another cable to connect, but there is no power cable. So it doesn't take up another outlet or anything like that to turn on the Rodecaster like right now I have it on channel two. If I press channel two, I just turn on phantom power and then that feeds power to that channel. I haven't taken it apart or anything, but if the electronics on the inside are put together with the same quality as the outside, this thing should last basically forever. And once you've got this connected to your mixer and you've got phantom power running to it, what it does is it gives you up to 25 decibels of clean gain. So where on a mixer you can crank up the gain and boost your signal and you get that hiss, it's not really clean. This does the same thing, boosting the signal and gives you no hiss, so it gives you a clean boost. The setup that I've got right now is I've got two pod mics running into the Rodecaster Pro. There's no additional processing for either of these microphones, so they're set up exactly the same. One of them, this one on my left on your right with the purple cable is going directly into the Rodecaster and this one on my right, your left with the blue cable is going through the Cloudlifter. So let's switch over to the Rodecaster Pro and the pod mics and see how that sounds. 
This is the pod mic connected directly to the Rodecaster with no additional cloud lifter or processing or anything like that. It's just sort of the natural signal from the pod mic. I have the gain set to plus 35 decibels, which is where I pretty much always use it and have always used it on podcasts and recordings, and it works pretty well with my voice. And I also have the volume slider almost all the way at the very top. So this is also maxing out at about 15 on the broadcast meters, which is great. It's a perfectly usable level. Uh, let's see here, actually, if I go into the level and I turn it down, you'll hear that background hiss kind of go away a little bit. Now it's gone, but my voice is also really quiet. As I bring it back up to a level where it's loud enough to use with my voice, you do hear a little bit of that background hiss. It's really not too bad, and it's also something that if it is bothering you, it's very easy to just get rid of with like Adobe Audition or running it through whatever software you use. But having the microphone all the way at the very, very top gives me nowhere to go. Fortunately, I've been a teacher for 11 years, so I'm used to speaking loudly, but if you're somebody who speaks a little more quietly, or you're, you know, you have a guest who's not someone who's used to speaking loudly, this could be an issue because once you hit that top level, there's nowhere else to go from there. So now on channel two, which has the cloud lifter attached, if I put the slider all the way up and put the gain at the same level, this is what that sounds like. So I'm gonna turn that slider down a little bit. So we saw a, a pretty big difference there actually. Right now at plus 35, I can have the slider all the way down uh, at what, one, two, three, like four notches from the bottom. So that's a pretty big difference. And if you listen to the background hiss, so this is what it sounds like just without me talking on the cloud lifted channel versus the other channel. And if I switch between the microphones, the sound quality really shouldn't be that different. This is the direct microphone. You might still hear some of that background noise. And this is the cloud lifted microphone. I can, at least in my headphones, hear less noise, but the sound quality should overall be the, the, the same, basically. Now, one thing that is really cool is, since I have so much more headspace here, I can turn down the gain on the Rodecaster and then turn up the volume here and I can be down, you know, like at plus 27 instead of plus 35 and still get plenty of volume. For me, this would be great because now I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, about six and a half notches from the very, very bottom. I know that's super technical, <laughs> notches. And there's plenty of volume for my voice. I could increase it if I really wanted to, which would be nice if I didn't necessarily want to speak super close to the microphone. And that can be very helpful if you're somebody who does interviews with people who aren't used to talking into microphones because they will inevitably never be close enough to the microphone. Whenever you're you're working with someone who's just not used to it, they always just speak a little too far away. And so having that extra room to kind of boost their signal can make a huge difference when it comes to mixing the final version of whatever you're creating. And now another big difference is because the Rodecaster's gain is at plus 27 instead of plus 35 like I normally have it, and the volume slider is just above halfway, you'll definitely notice a difference between the background hiss on this channel versus this channel. So here's this one. So if you're listening to this like on your phone or on your laptop speakers, you might not actually notice it that much, but if you're listening to it on your headphones, you should have been able to hear a little bit of difference in background hiss. Now, is that an issue or not? That's entirely up to you. And again, it, it comes down to your voice, how loud you normally speak. For $250 though, honestly, I thought there was gonna be a bigger like night and day difference, but it's really more of like a late afternoon, early evening and day difference. Like it's it's definitely there, but it's not as extreme as I thought. I thought I'd be able to either like turn the gain all the way down on the Rodecaster, or I'd be able to like keep the volume slider almost down at the bottom and just have so much headroom, which really ended up showing me how good the preamps are in the Rodecaster. They're pretty dang powerful and they're pretty dang quiet. And how I found that out was by connecting it also to my old Yamaha mixer. So. This is more of a traditional mixer, and it's sort of a silly comparison because I believe this costs like 200, maybe $220, and they still make these, whereas this Cloud Lifter is $250, so 
this preamp costs more than this entire mixer. But just for the sake of reference, if maybe you're running one of these microphones through a different interface than the Rodecaster, let's see what the difference is. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back to the video mic NTG, which is up here out of frame, just to kind of explain a few things about this mixer. So where the Rodecaster, you can turn on phantom power for each individual channel. This mixer just has one button right here that will turn on phantom power for all of the four XLR channels. And phantom power, if you're unaware, is pretty magical. Most dedicated mixers have it, and it lets you provide power to a microphone from the connected XLR cable. Now I should mention though that phantom power does not go through the cloud lifter. So if you have something like a condenser microphone that needs direct phantom power in order to work, the power will go here and stop and it will not continue onto the microphone. Just something to be aware of. So let's set up our little test here. I'm going to disconnect this XLR cable from the cloud lifter, which is actually one of my cons to the cloud lifter, at least on the one that I have, is that it can be really tough to get the cable out of these connectors sometimes, actually to the point where I'm worried about damaging it. Come on now. I feel like it shouldn't be this hard. I'm like sweating. <laughs> Here, I was actually kind of dreading setting up for this video because I knew I was gonna have to uh, unplug and replug. I feel like that shouldn't be that hard to unplug. This side of it is normal. So I don't know, that's a, it's just a weird thing, but anyway. Um, I'm gonna plug this into channel one of my mixer. I don't know if you can actually even hear this. It's showing up as like negative 45 in Adobe Audition. Now we should be getting to a point where it's a little louder. This is the gain entirely maxed out on this channel, which is probably gonna introduce some pretty serious background hiss. So you can hear the, the, the hiss going up and down. Whereas even on the Rodecaster without the cloud lifter, I don't think there's nearly that much background noise. And if you look at Adobe Audition over here, my levels are just really, really small. So let's go ahead and add in the cloud lifter. Press fan. Ooh. Okay, there's a difference. It's just press phantom power, yikes. So if I boost up the gain right around to the level that I would really want it, which would probably be around here, there's actually still, <laughs> at least I'm hearing it in my headphones, a bit of background noise. I get a fairly clean signal, but again, this is the Rodecaster without the cloud lifter and the gain boosted to plus 35. And this is the Yamaha mixer with the cloud lifter and the gain boosted to two o'clock. So here's the background hiss on that mixer with the cloud lifter. And here's the Rodecaster without it. So the reason I want to do this test with the Yamaha mixer is just to explain why I wasn't initially totally blown away by the cloud lifter, and that's because there wasn't such a night and day difference. I'm definitely noticing a bigger difference on a more traditional mixer, although still quite a bit of background hiss it sounds like, whereas with the Rodecaster, even without the cloud lifter, it still sounds pretty clean. And what that showed me was that the Rodecaster just has really good preamps it can definitely still benefit to add something like this, give you a little more headroom, especially if you don't talk as loudly and authoritatively as me, because when people think of me, they think of authority and intimidation, obviously. So now we're back to our original setup using the Rodecaster Pro and the Cloud Lifter on this channel and no Cloud Lifter on this channel. Honestly, honestly, before I was making this video, I've been using this for about a week and I wasn't that impressed with it. But going back and forth for the sake of this video where I'm being extra, like extra critical of it, to me, this microphone with the cloud lifter sounds significantly cleaner than the microphone without the cloud lifter. So this video is actually selling me on the cloud lifter more than I was before making the video. And since I am using a weird mix of not cloud lifted versus cloud lifted, there is a technical term for when you're using a cloud lifter on one channel and not the other, and that would be partly cloudy. Now earlier I did mention what I was gonna talk about some of the cons of the cloud lifter, and the biggest one is just the price. Now like I said, I've only had this one for about a week, but it is built like a tank I fully have the expectation, especially based on its reputation, that it'll pretty much last forever. So it is one of those things that's pretty expensive, but you buy once, you cry once, and then you just have it 
forever. I think if you're using the Rodecaster Pro, you're already using a device that has a really good, clean preamp. And that means that whether or not you need something like the Cloud Lifter, it's not gonna make the biggest difference in the world. Taking that money and investing it into like a nice microphone or just saving that money might be a smarter choice. If you're using a different mixer or a different interface that doesn't have quite the quality preamps that the Rodecaster does, then the Cloud Lifter makes a lot of sense. So kind of as always, whether or not it's worth it is up to you. I will say that for me, I was really debating whether or not to keep the Cloud Lifter because I just didn't see the huge difference that I was hoping. But after making this video, I do actually notice more of a difference. It's just, it's pretty dang expensive. If you have the budget for it and the money's not an issue, then yes, this is going to give you more gain and cleaner sounding audio out of your Rodecaster and it's probably a good idea. If you don't have the budget or it would be a stretch, I don't think you really, really need it because you can get such good results just out of here in general. I've been playing around with audio for many, many years, but I'm by no means a total expert. And that is actually how I like to approach these reviews is yes, I could get frequency charts and graphs and we could nitpick every single little thing, but I'm more interested in how does this function in a real world everyday workflow, you're somebody like me, you produce your own stuff, you use these tools, is this gonna make it better? Is it not gonna make it better? If so, does it make it noticeably better or not? It's pretty simple, it's a pretty down to earth approach. So I hope that that is helpful. Now, as you probably know, I've got quite a few videos about the Rodecaster and podcasting and podcasting gear. So I'm gonna put a playlist here that has a whole bunch of those and you can just spend the rest of the day binging on those videos. There's zero calories. You can binge as many of them as you want. <laughs> <laughs>